Excellences, ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor and privilege to address you all at this important fifth United Nations Conference on Least Developed Countries in this beautiful brotherly state of Qatar. Indeed, we must ensure that the use of this opportunity to truly, truly reflect and act together on these policies and strategies that can accelerate sustainable development in, the, in places where international assistance is needed the most and to tap the full potential of the least developed countries so that we pave the way for progress and prosperity of our people going forward. I thank the UN and all its agencies and the state of Qatar for joining forces to deliver this crucial time, global, timely global discussion on what must now be a call to action to achieve tangible results in delivering sustainable development in the least developed countries. Accordingly, in this age of global independence and common challenges and opportunities, we cannot and must not leave anyone behind if we are serious about the sustainable development and progress of most vulnerable people in the world today. There is an abundant untapped potential in the least developed countries like Somalia, but the challenge remains turning this into progress and prosperity for the people who are among the poorest in the world is standing tall. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, historical and modern challenges for development in Somalia, while having a great potential and prospects for development, one of the reasons Somalia has struggled with sustainable development is legacy of a prolonged conflict and political instability in the past. We are now successfully addressing both through dialogue and ongoing inclusive state building process. We are also collectively and successfully fighting the last remaining pocket of international terrorism in Somalia and in the region, in partnership with our people and international partners as well. However, our challenges have been compounded by the impact of climate change which is exacerbating drought and food insecurity. This requires urgent and better coordinated global response to mitigate and adapt to in order to ensure lives and livelihoods of the most vulnerable in our country is protected. The COVID-19 pandemic impacted Somalia heavily and we learned the centrality of a social protection system to cope with the future global shocks. Accordingly, we are working tirelessly to grow the economy, create jobs, and raise domestic revenue, but there is not yet the strong financial social safety net that other developing nations have enjoyed. However, there was and is a strong sense of community, resilience, and body sharing like in most of other least developed countries that helped us cope with the COVID-19 pandemic. This sense of community must be recognized as a strength and acknowledged in the design of all international development projects through prioritizing local needs, expertise, and job creation as envisaged in Somalia's national development plan. Indeed, this is the most effective way to ensure developmental impact and strengthen the social protection in the most vulnerable communities across the least developed countries. Social protection does not and should not mean handouts. It is about creating opportunities for self-respect, dignity, and sufficiency, which build on the existing communal resources and resilience. In Somalia, we are determined to make the leap from simple potential to prosperity in a manner that benefits our people and play to our national strengths. We are already working hard in national economic reform program to achieve debt relief through the high, highly indebted poor countries initiative. And once this achieved, we seek to rely on our capacity to trade as a nation to achieve prosperity. Somalia is a resourceful, rich nation with one of the longest coastlines in the world, fertile and arable land for agriculture and livestock, as well as strong tradition of trade, 
in all goods and services across the region and the world. There is also a strong digital connectivity across the society, and a two million plus strong diaspora are playing their part in rebuilding our national, our nation through remittances and investments. There is a clear, huge potential to be innovative in providing education and creating jobs for the whole population, including youth, girls, and women. If we can harness the potential of our country and the entrepreneurial spirit of our people while continuing to increase domestic revenue mobilization, public financial management reform, and good governance. Technology also provides a cost-effective and accessible opportunity to leapfrog, to leapfrog in financial inclusion and key public service delivery, especially education, public health, which are vital for human capital development in any country. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Somalia is making tangible progress today thanks to its resilient people and international partners who continue to stand by our side as we strive forward for a better future. In this regard, I urge that all manner of effective partnerships to deliver results be strengthened further in the, come, in the near future. We must all learn from each other's development journey success, challenges, and opportunities. We must also abandon silo thinking and dominant narrow institutional project-oriented action to achieve the least developed countries' ambitious developmental goal, which is clearly laid out in the Doha Program of Action for 2022-2031 in a timely manner and a change lives. In conclusion, the Somali government welcomes the Doha Program of Action for the least developed countries, and we will work closely with our people and partners to ensure that we deliver it, we deliver its commitment for the betterment of the people. I again thank for the United Nations and the state of Qatar for providing this August opportunity for the least developed countries' issues and challenges to be addressed. I thank you.